seems legit. Hello, legitimates. Uh, I promised I would do this, and so here it is. It is a... What is it? Lola by Swoon. This is the one that I cut out in the video. How amazing do our straps look? So these match our actual handles, which I think is really fun. We've got our accents, which lined up beautifully. We've got bag feet. And then on the inside, I did a zipper overlay with a stamp, with my logo stamped onto it. Um, so stay tuned and I'll show you how to put it together. All right, let's go. So I have interfaced all the stuff. You can watch me cutting this out. I have a no longer live that I did with this. Uh, so I'm gonna start with handles because it's a new bobbin and that's just what I like to do. We've also got some extras in this. So I'm doing fancy handles because I enjoy fancy handles. No other reason. This is three quarter inch tape. I like it better than half inch for handles. It's my favorite. I use, oops, I use a lot of it actually. I go through a lot of tape here, but I also make a lot of things. So it all kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, it's currently uh, lots and lots of rain is happening outside today. So I'm just going to peel the backing off a section of it and then bring it together and squish it down. So the, the main vinyl, this pretty one, is from a Timu haul I recently did. I will put the link below. Um, so what I got out of that one piece that you see in the video is this bag plus two key fobs. I've cut one of the panels of a purse pal and the top flap on both sides of an NCW. So that's what you get from 30 centimeters. Now obviously different bags will take different amounts. Oh, and a main panel of a Devon pouch. So I got quite a lot. My new life philosophy, why have I got so, oh no, that's right. I remember why I've got so much. Um, my new life philosophy is to use up all of the fabric, make all of the things that people could possibly want. And then if they want to buy it as a set, I'm going to set it up on the website, hopefully, to show them the other things that come in this print. So I'm just stitching this down. Um, I do find buttery smooth a little bit on the stretchy side, which is why I'm going so slowly, because it does keep trying to get out of my way, which I just think is rude. To prevent that, we can use double-sided tape, like a skinny one. The second side's always easier though. It can't really move anywhere once I've stitched it down. And my thread is almost a rose goldy colour, so that's why I've picked this and not a turquoise. Which was my second option, but if you have a look, it kind of looks rose gold. And I think that looks amazing. So that's one of the straps. This extra bit here we're going to use for other things, so don't discard that. And see how my, see how it's twisty? What we can do to eliminate the twist is figure out which way it's going twist it in the opposite direction and just kind of tug on it a little bit and it instantly goes away. A little magic trick I learned. I am indeed a fan. All right, so peel off the backing of this one. I shouldn't have done that. Usually it'll stick to the table, but I'm just gonna be extra careful about it. And I'm just bringing both sides into the center at the same time. Now, if you've been with me through a long time of my sewing video journey, you'll know that I used to really suck at doing this. You can actually go back and watch me do it in videos and how bad and slow I was. Uh, but perseverance will make you quicker and better. It's just a practice thing. And I do now find this quicker than having to draw a line in the center and then do one side and then come back into the other. So you just kind of pinch it to the middle and then push down. 
It took me a while to learn it, but now that I have, it's amazing. So I'm just going to take my zipper double-sided tape, which is an eighth of an inch or three millimeters for those at home that don't at all deal in inches. Australia does centimeters, but I did find that most bag patterns come in inches and that's why I continued that trend. It's the only reason. I wanted people to feel like it was somewhat normal. So I'm going to take the rest of this. This one's for it in a minute. And I'm just going to lay it where I want it on top of the double-sided tape. And I'm hoping that this will help it not move while I stitch it. It'd be very much appreciated, but we'll see. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. It definitely works better. You can see I'm going much quicker with the tape. It's just a matter of, like everything, is time versus money. So do you want to spend the time and not use the tape? Or use a little bit of extra money and use the tape? Backstitch, trim it, trim them off. You'll also notice with the tape we don't have as much of a twist. There is still a little one, so again, we're going to twist it in the opposite direction and just give it a little tug, and it straightens itself out. Best magic trick ever. We're going to start with these bad boys. These are my altered strap connectors. This is not what comes with the pattern. Um, so in my cutting video, I do give you the measurements of these because technically they're my random add-on. So again, I'm putting double-sided tape down the center. And it's just occurred to me, I did not grab any of the hardware for this bag. I just thought about it then, I'm like, whoops. So there will be definitely be a pause in this video while I go and round it all up. So in the center, I actually don't have to start at an end. You can start wherever you want with this. There's no right or wrong way to do it. So I'm going to take this. And now that we know that it misbehaves without tape, I'm also going to put a really skinny amount of tape. You can also use quarter inch. This one is less likely to get under your needle. I mean, there's still the other one, but it depends on if your needle gums up or not. If it does, use the skinnier stuff. It won't get in the way. Stick it down the center, and then I'm going to stitch. Do I want to stitch it? No, I do. I do. I want to stitch this on. The reason I was thinking about it is because I could have just stitched it straight to the bag like this, but that's not going to work out the way I think it will. So when I stitch it to the bag, I'll be stitching on the turquoise part at the side. You can trim off this excess and of course, as always, the tails. Sometimes they get a bit kind of skewy at the back. Let's chop them off. So there's one. Grab another one, push it down, peel it back. Bring it together. Other way. Down the center. And then I'm going to get this other second long piece and stick that down as well. So these are just extra fancy handles. In no manner do you have to do them like this. You could have just done the two. It wouldn't matter. I'm just being extra fancy because I can. And because it can't hurt. Now if you want to, you can actually just leave that there so that you can chain the stitch the next one.
This does take extra effort. Um, but it's just another way to make it look cool. So this would look really, really awesome if you did it in reverse, where you're doing a solid colored bag, and then all of these accents were in a print, like a really busy print or a micro print, like a micro floral or something. It would look awesome. Not that this won't look awesome, but you know. I did actually consider doing a reverse one. I still might after this in a different print since I have so much. Chop that off. We purely, I'm chopping it off so I can do the next one. Pop it under, off we go. Sticky taping it down really does help to sew it quicker. So if you like to sew quickly like I do, get onto it. Next, I'm just going to take a little bit of that pressure off. This up here is the, the foot pressure, so how hard it pushes down. There's a fine line between too hard and not hard enough. Unfortunately. Alright, last one, and then I'll stop and get my hardware. Oh, actually, I could just keep sewing until I'm up to it. But I was going to do outside and then inside. Stick it down. Try not to stretch it. Now, if you wanted to, you could turn this into a key fob. Uh, like this one over here is going to be. So I've just done exactly the same thing. And it will be a key fob. I like my key fobs 14 inches. Um... Which is why I designed my one of my rulers that long. I find it a good size, so you can get your hand in and out easily, but it's not so big it's more likely to fall off. So keep that if you want to. Make a matching key fob or, you know, a whole multitude of different things you might want to do. Okay. Let's get the hardware. So my version today is using four strap connectors, two zippers, four bag feet, and some rivets. Now this is a personal preference for me. I always like to fold it over. I put the ring at one and a quarter and then fold it over. It gives me enough excess to stitch it down properly. I find an inch just is not quite enough. So I do inch and a quarter, which of course you can totally ignore and not do if you have no problems. It also depends on the thickness of your hardware. I use quite chunky hardware, so that extra quarter to tuck under just helps, in my opinion. So I do this to all bag patterns, even if it doesn't say it to. And I can either add length if I need to, or just have them that little bit further down. I'm pretty okay with either. I'm putting one clip on each side to hold it in place like that and then I'm gonna grab one of my exterior pieces. So I have ironed the bag foam on and it is all the way to the edge. If you want to, again if you're on a domestic you may want to take it out of the seam allowance. That's entirely up to you. I'm going to grab a ruler. Oops. That just got caught on the cord of my phone because it's partially flat. I'm going to take this. Now, this is my preference because this is the way I make this bag. But I'm going to go two inches in from the edge bottom part. Now, the new version of this pattern technically doesn't look like this at the bottom. But since I don't own it, I can't really help you out with that. This is just what I do. And again, each to their own. And I'm going to do both of them so that then I can put the ruler away. Because to be honest, it's already in my way. Um, this is an erasable pen. And since I'm drawing on vinyl, it will just wipe away. 
Uh, you can use like a baby wipe or something. Whatever works for you. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it on the inside of the line that I just drew. Right there. Now again, you can sticky tape that down if that's your jam. What I'm going to do, make sure it's on the line and then stitch one eighth of an inch from the very outside. When I get to this side, I'm actually going to reverse back a few stitches just so that they don't skip in the corner because of the hardware. It has been known to happen and I do not enjoy that. How cool does that look? It's like all subtle and stuff instead of just a lot of turquoise, which we're going to do just in a different spot. So again, I'm going to line that up on the inside of the line towards the center. Get the tails out of the way and off we go. So again, making sure that edge is lined up. And then back. Again, I only like to do a couple of stitches back, but it just, I think it helps. Trim those tails, pop them straight in the bin so I have less mess. And so again, on the inside edge, we're going to line it up. This is going to be a very busy bag, but I'm excited for it. That was my kid just popping in. He wanted to grab his picture to show dad. We were doing colouring this morning. I actually snuck out to do this video because I thought he was happy to watch a movie. I don't think he got all the way through it before he got bored. And then we're going through again with the reversing. And then down the edge. It is a lot. You didn't have to backstitch there. I just do it out of habit. It is a lot, but we're not finished with the amount of turquoise. This tech color is technically called peacock, if anyone's wondering. Um, I will have more in a minute. So again, I think this bag it's very busy. It's, this is obviously not for everyone. But you could do the same theory with a solid colour but have like a basket weave texture or any kind of texture and then do plain for all like where the turquoise is. Ugh, I'm going to knock all that over if I'm not careful. And down we go. It actually blends in a lot nicer than I thought. The flowers in this are a little bit more blue, but I'm not worried. All right, I'm going to grab all of these and we're going to put these on. So these are my little corner accents that I've made um, to give us more turquoise on the bag. This is really fun. If you're doing a solid color bag, something fun might be to put piping against this edge that would look very cute there's so many cool little add-ons you can do one day when I've got the time I want to cut out one of my patterns and then show you a whole bunch of different ways to make it look completely different different add-ons different you know ways of doing stuff it's going to be like a whole week of the same bag, which may bore some of you, but I think it would be cool. So we're going to line up the edges with the edges and pop that on. Pretty. Pretty. 
Now these handles do pop out of these a little bit as you can see. Uh, so option one is make these bigger if you don't like it or move these out further. I'm quite happy with it but you can do whatever you like. I am not the boss of you. And if you want to make these accents, I did do a video on it. You'll just have to go back six months to a year, I guess. I don't know. I can't remember when I made it. But it's going to be pretty. And suddenly, these that were drowning suddenly pop back out because of the colour. It's like colour theory. Not that I've ever been very good at colour theory. I get the basics. And then I'm going to grab the next one, pop it under, keep it going. The double sided tape just helps it to not move around, really. I usually do one or two stitches of nothing in between jumping from one to the other. Just gives you that little bit of wiggle room to be able to cut it off easier, in my opinion. I want to go slow because top stitching the curve is important and I want it to be pretty. And then from here, I'm just going to do this very, very dodgy. If you don't see that and you won't see this all the way across the bottom to come up the other side like that you won't see that little corner so it doesn't matter that I just did that at all you won't see it it's not gonna pop up in the bag so don't worry about it I don't have to stitch all the way across the bottom but it's actually quicker than me um, starting and stopping And so suddenly, the bag's got a whole different feel to it. I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. So that's the outside piece is done. Let's go on to our inner zipper pocket, which I have here. I have a zipper overlay that I have stamped with my logo. Uh, the stamps aren't out till March, but they are from Brimax which is the people that now do my templates. Trim. And then the half that's got the bit on it, we're going to trim. I have now also released this for a dollar on my website. Uh, so if you want this shape, it's both SVG and PDF. So you can just print it off your computer or you can cut it with your cutting machine. It's a genuine or general, sorry, not genuine, general PDF format, uh, SVG format, so that will go into all different brands of cutting machines. All of them, if I'm not mistaken. Also the laser, so if you're doing them out of leather, you could cut it with the laser if you've got a laser. Uh, do not cut faux leather with a laser unless it says it's laserable because some of them have toxic gas and you do not want to be breathing that in. It can also um, erode your machine. So just very important. As much as I would love to just laser everything, you can't do it with acrylic. Uh, pro leather. Synthetic leather. Unless it states it in the manufacturer's description. And I say this because I did get some faux stuff the other day, but it is laserable. So, I've done the two long lines. I am now going to fold this over and just make a snip in the center. Now, because this is waterproof canvas, uh, what we can do is... We can just... We don't have to iron this. It will form a crease very nicely all on its own. It's magic like that. So we bend it down and we fold it flat at that, that seam. Same with the other side. It doesn't matter if you do top or bottom first. 
push it through, hook your fingers in, and then fold it at that seam and create another crease. Now even, like that's not dead flat, but it's flat enough. Let's put our zipper overlay on. You can also just use normal zipper overlays. I just like that this one's got my logo on it. I will eventually be cutting a bunch of HTV to match all the hardware colors. I like three bits of tape for this, just so the bottom doesn't kind of flop around. Normally I would have used quarter inch for that, uh, but it's over at my other table because I was using it for something else before. So we're going to lift this up and then we're just going to put it over the zipper hole. Now I'm going to open that out flat so that I can see it properly and then realize that I put it on slightly wrong. That's okay. That's why we use double sided tape. That's also why I don't like glue. Glue is much messier if you want to rip it up. Double sided tape is much more forgiving on the matter. There we go. So now I'm going to stitch around the outside edge without stitching the underneath pocket. So I'm just going to pretty consistently move it out of the way as I go around. Use my thumb to tuck in that edge. Did I just run out of bobbin thread? If it's not, not yet, but it's coming, I can hear it. And then I'm going to take the whole pocket and sweep it up. Tuck in that corner. You want to try and get it pretty consistently around the edge. The curves can be a little bit tricky, but I do like, I think they look nicer. Um, I will eventually be having all of my zipper overlays having this extra piece. Uh, it's not a priority today. Today I wanted to play in the shed while hubby and my child are in the house chilling out. Oh, okay. So see, I got a bit. Not ideal. Normally, because it's just a little bit though, just chop it off. This, that's still within the seam allowance, so it actually won't affect anything. If it was here, I would have unpicked it. But because it was just at the edge, it's fine. Zipper tape. This color matches nicely. It's kind of got a rose goldy beigey feel. Oops. So this is the one I'm using. I like to use the teeth color. It's just my jam. I have a bunch of it from when I was selling it. So until, actually no, that's a lie because I keep restocking it when I run out. I do have solid colored ones for when I just think the shades of other stuff don't quite match. But generally speaking, I like to use that. So I'm gonna split the zip and then just feed this on a little bit. Now this one's got a protective coating some of them came with it when I got the zips, and some of them didn't. It's a bit of a potluck moment. Stick that in the bin. I could also laser engrave this um, and find like a cute little succulent, but it's raining and I don't want to hang it outside. Right, so this nice and creased. Again, with the double-sided tape. I'm all about the tape today. I don't know why. I just feel like it. Usually I can, I can do this without the tape, uh, but sometimes it really is easier with it. And I, I, you know what it is? This has got a slight curve to it, and I can't be bothered getting up and ironing it. That's actually what it is. So the double-sided tape is going to hold my zipper where I want it to be without me having to iron it. It's pretty much what it is. I am being lazy. 
So I'm going to lay this the way I want it to close in front of me. I'm going to pick this up, making sure it stays open, and then just kind of flick it to be on top. Like that. Pull that bit out. And then you should be able to pick it up and the zipper stays. See, and now the curvy bit is irrelevant to my sewing mission. And I like that. I'm going to come in front of the zipper and the way it closes. I'm going to fix that because it's just a little bit off. There we go. And around we go. Swivel. Down the other side. I also have to keep an eye on the bobbin. I do know it's going to finish soon. start and back stitch trim off the tails back to adjoining stitch fold this over and I'm just gonna stitch the two sides we're leaving the bottom open for later because that's where I like to close my bags personal preference and all that Make sure that you backstitch at both ends so that it doesn't unravel later. Having to hand stitch a zipper pocket is a pain in the butt and you trust me, you don't want to have to. Stitch, backstitch, up the other side. So you can see that the little bit that was cut out is pretty much at the top here. It wasn't a problem. I essentially ignored it. And all as well. Now these don't have a front and a back. If you did have a tag, you could put it here. If that's your jam, I do not have rose gold tags. One day I'm going to make a bunch. Not today. So, double uh, zipper tape. You can put zipper tabs on your zip if you like that. I'm not feeling it, but you could. So what we're going to do, actually, you know what's quicker? You said it. Double side tape. Let me show you. So rather than, because it's a curve, right? Curves can potentially be quite tricky, especially if you're new to sewing. They can be an absolute pain in the butt. So what I'm going to do is put the double sided tape along the edge instead. Pick the backing off. Place this right sides down with the edge of the zipper against the edge of the vinyl. Like that. Grab my zipper scissors so that I don't blunt all the pairs. And chop it off. Now, some people like to chop off extra. I personally think that's a waste of zipper. Vine, uh, zipper. But that's just me. Oh, I lost my snips. Let me see if I'm, I have monkey feet. It's fine. You could do either one uh, because I don't have a front and a back on this bag. If you did, you would think about which way you want your zip to go. So I'm just going to lay this on top, pop it under, stitch, back stitch, obviously, because we always back stitch. Now next to a zipper, it's always a quarter inch. You can't do any more because you'll run into the zipper teeth. And because the exterior is the thicker one and I stuck the zipper to that, doing the lining just sitting on top, piece of cake. Here's where we get a bit trickier. I am going to fold the seam allowance under the panel and top stitch. This always gets tricky, I'm not even going to lie. Especially the second side. Most of the time I just crack the zipper and be done with it. Because the curve does not want to play ball as much as you'd think. But 
It is neater and nicer if you do the top stitching, so I do recommend doing it. And you want to you want to um, top stitch that seam down if you can. If you miss little sections of it, that's also okay. But do try to get it all down. Like that. Ta-da! And then we just kind of push that actually all the way down. Fabulous. Got a nice curve. Look at us go. We are on fire. And that's a good looking bag. I'm glad I picked that zipper. If I had have had this exact colour, I would have gone with that. But the turquoise thing I've got is quite darker. It's more teal than turquoise. Because in my head, teal is just a darker shade of turquoise. And aqua is like a pale blue with a little bit of green. Alright. So, this is where we can just rip this one off. I know that freaks a lot of people out, but it's going to make your life much, much easier, especially for the top stitching of this side. Stick it down. On the very edge, I'm just using my thumb to smooth it down so it stays where it's told. Now I didn't put any extra pockets on this side. You could add a slip pocket or a cargo pocket or whatever you feel like. I am not the boss of you. Um, but sometimes I personally think simple bags don't necessarily need it. Okay, I just ran out of thread. I knew it was coming. The more you sew, the more in tune with your machine you are and eventually you can hear it when it's nearly out. Mine makes like more of a tinny echoey noise. And that's how I know it's nearly finished. I don't know why it does it. I'm not, I'm not amazing. I don't know everything. I just know when it's happening. Line up the edge of the lining with the edge of the bag. Back stitch at the end. Trim your tails up to my top stitch length and then again we're gonna do this now if you had have kept your zipper joined this will have two things in your way and it fights you a little bit harder why are you not working don't start with me it's always easier to hold it up I think, for the most part. Sometimes at the start it's a bit naughty. Done. Ta-da! Push that down, because the curve really is messing with you. So you should now have two bits that look like this. I'm gonna take this one and see which way the zipper's closing. Grab my other zipper, so I want it to end up over here. So I'm gonna start at this end. Now technically you could start at either end because we're gonna take the zipper all the way off and then put it on again. I promise, oh my goodness. This will make your edges look nicer. Now this is probably the fiddliest part of the whole bag because you gotta try and get the curved zipper to go in evenly, which it usually doesn't want to do for me. Although that one was pretty easy. So again, I want the zipper to close over here, so I'm going to just crack this end. It never happens first time for me. It must be my day. Push it on. No, that missed. Right. So you really want to be able to get the teeth on evenly. It'll make for a nicer zipper. And it's usually only one tooth the difference. But it's still important to try. See, I just did it again, but one tooth the other way. 
sometimes it just wants to be a rude. See, I jinxed myself because I did it so well the first time. I know some people cut the teeth off. I actually find that harder because then they're not even. Also, these tails are annoying my brain. Take them off. Let's try this again. So, on one side, pinch it, then push the other side. And this is only tricky because it's a curve. If you straighten the top of this bag out, this becomes a lot easier. I do really like this shape. All right, it's on. I'm going to close it in the middle. Then from the inside, I'm going to stitch the teeth within the seam allowance, back and forth, so that they stay together. Trust me, this is a saving grace moment to do this. You don't want to pull too hard, otherwise the zipper does crack open and then you've got to do it all again. I'm doing about a quarter inch seam allowance from the edge, too close to the edge and it'll fall off. So now that will actually stay closed and you can pop this through like that. So I'm going to come, I'm going to do the side seam. The first thing I'm going to do is line up the top of my accent. This is the part that people will notice. And if you go into like a bag shop, you will notice that some of them are epic. And some of the cheaper bags are atrocious and they're like a quarter inch out and you can tell it's just not as pretty so i like to put the most amount of pretty that i can into a bag and this is one of those little things that you can do that helps now i'm going to make sure that my teeth are pushed into the lining that way the zipper like spools away into the lining clip that end now this will look like it doesn't really match. It will just ignore that. It'll be fine. Sometimes the lining is just dramatic. So again, zip it towards the lining. Clip, oop, missed, where'd it go? There it is. Okie dokie. Half inch seam allowance. Joining stitch length, not top stitching length. Slow and steady, because there's quite a few layers and you don't want to like break something. Once you get over those zipper teeth, you can lift up your presser foot and change angles. And backstitch. Because we always backstitch. Flip it over so you can start at the thick end. I always like to go down the hill. So this side's thicker, and then you go down to the lining. Again, it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes you have to go up, but when you've got the option, always head downhill. It just works out better for everyone, I promise. Sometimes trying to go uphill as you're pushing it under the presser foot, the presser foot will make them uneven. And so all of our time and effort to make everything match will then be wasted. Just a thought. Um, good scissors. Trim off here. And in here without cutting your stitches. Takes a controlled effort. And then just trim that off. Same with this side. I'm also going to get those tails while I'm at it. Trim that off. Into the corner. Down the end. This just takes out some of the bulk from the rest of our sewing. Actually, while I'm here, I'm going to take the lining and just pick a side, any side, doesn't matter. This side because it's the way it's sitting. And I'm going to stitch the base in just on one side. It's the only bit I'm going to do. And that way we can turn the bag through the whole bottom. This is another one of my favourite things to do these days. Turn the whole base. Uh, turn the bag through the base. Which works on 95% of bags. 
I want to put bag feet because bag feet are pretty. Again, it's a bit extra. You don't have to use bag feet. I do find that my bags sell more quickly with them. And whenever I do custom orders, everybody makes a point to tell me that they want bag feet. So take from that what you will. You can put bag feet wherever. There's, there's a lot of leniency with this. As you can see, I'm just ruling lines. I've got a set measurement that I do, but some people like them further out. Some people like them further in. You can pretty much go anywhere from here to there. Anywhere that your bag feet is in that space is still good. Still good. I like to hang up those, my um, rulers so that they don't get in the way. That was a bit loose. So I'm just going to in punch a hole where everything intersects. That's not the light's fault. That's on me. I've got it uh, balancing on the edge of my sewing machine. So if I bang it too much, it kind of falls off and then I have to catch it. Push them through the bottom. I haven't put bag foam in the bottom of this. You can if you want to. Hear them all clicked. Clicking is good. Clicking means they won't move. And then you can actually feel them squish all the way down when you do this always have the dome pointing up this is not a special attachment this is just a 10 mil rivet attachment but it's got the kind of rubber around it so it won't mark your bag feet that's all nothing special about that attachment at all take our bag i'm going to put this in now this side i'm going to clip together because it's thicker, it likes to be naughty. Been there, done that many a time. So I'm gonna clip probably just four, just so it can't shift while I'm trying to sew it, because it will try if you don't put clips. The first side's usually okay. It's the second side that really likes to mess with you. So we're gonna stitch, back stitch. We are nearly finished this bag. It is quite a quick make because there's not a lot to it. Uh, and if you had strap anchors, like the fancy metal hardware, it would be even quicker because you wouldn't have to have done all the strap sewing. Now we're going to do the other side. I do think that this bag will sell quickly. I don't know if you can see that, but that side was um, more effort to clip together because it's fighting against itself. Which is why sometimes clips are important. I don't clip if I don't have to, out of sheer laziness or efficiency. You guys always tell me I'm efficient. I literally call myself lazy and I'm okay with it. Um, sometimes it just doesn't want to play ball. All right. To make my life easier, I'm gonna make a little nick here it's just gonna help you gotta trust me on that i've made this bag a lot i really actually want to make some more after i'm done here but we'll see so now i'm gonna pull that out and i'm going to squish the bag to my will you can always iron the creases out later or steam them out if you've got a steamer and these edges will line up sometimes they just want to resist because it is a curved shape and they don't always want to do what they're told i can tell you that firsthand lots and lots of clips same with the other side if you need to find the center you should do that too i've made this bag enough that i can pretty well eyeball it but if you need to go ahead find the center so I'm going to do it this way up. I'm going to squish it down so that it actually goes under the needle. Stitch, back stitch.
See, it already shifted, even with the clips. So then you have to manhandle it back to where you want it. It can be done. It's just being a pain in my face. There we go. Trim. These are the blunt ones. Uh, my new black ones are the sharp ones. Uh, back under we go. Actually get a bit of a run up. As weird as that sounds. See that whole thing just moved. I can't quite show you. Um, but there's about this much of a gap. The whole thing just moved. The clips only do so much. I know some people like stapling their bags together. It's never worked out for me. I can never get the staples to even stay. Um, so I will be manhandling into submission. That will be my brute force kind of a moment. Hold it together. Better. Was it perfect? Absolutely not. I missed a little bit. But it's much less than it was. Alright, so see how it's just like that little bit bigger? Right. Not what I was aiming for, but it'll be fine. So, trim off the excess. Because it's going to sit nicer. I also just want to... Where was it? Where was I looking? See here? I just want to do this edge just a little bit better and a little bit more. Because I am a slightly concerned that it's not quite as attached as I'd like. So, reinforcements never hurt anyone nobody sees this stitching so you could stuff it up 10 times and it's totally okay because nobody's gonna see it crack your zipper open by doing that i didn't show you but i just put my finger in front of the zipper pull and then do that and it just opens the zipper and then you just pull and it's good to go grab a corner now because we didn't sew the bottom of the bag we can literally just turn it through here it's going to be the quickest way and then I will sew up the lining through the zipper pocket which again won't be as hard as it sounds promise it's coming just give it a sec push out that side push along the bottom I'm actually making a bit of, I'm doing this, so I've got like my two knuckles a bit higher to kind of push at the corners and the edges and stuff because we want them to come out nicely. And then this seam here, you will need to roll in your fingers till you're right on the edge and then violently manhandle it like so. I call this the Tory squish uh, because apparently when I was naming things I just named them after myself because my brain's not as creative. Look at it. Isn't it fantastic? And can I just point out schmick-o. And the other side for that matter. They are all schmick-o, right? So you put that extra little bit of effort in and we are good. Open your zipper. Grab the lining and yank it through. You're not going to hurt anything. It'll be fine. Ta -da! All right. We're going to do the other long side of this first. Now, again, if you want to use clips, I won't need to. Once I get it started, it'll be fine. This stuff doesn't stretch at all. There is no give in waterproof canvas. So I can just sit, like I can use one hand for one piece, one hand for the other, line them up and just sew. And I have no fear that they're going to stretch out of shape. Unlike if you did a cotton lining, you'd want to interface it. Otherwise use clips so it doesn't stretch out of shape. So that's the long edges done. Now I just got to do short ones. So again, I'm going to have right sides up if you want to. Grab a few clips. I don't really need to, but sometimes it just helps. It's like having extra fingers. Right. 
one side. I don't know what else to tell you about this bag. I have made several videos on this. I just haven't made it in a while. And I have noticed that a lot of people don't backtrack very far through my videos. To be fair, I have about four or 500. Um, but I have done this, I, I know I've done it a few times at least. But I mean, it doesn't hurt to do a fresh refresher and this is pretty. Alright, tails off, then you want to just cut off some of this excess um, so that your bag will sit nicer. You want your lining to be kind of tucked right into the corners and with all this extra fabric it can't get there. So you want to trim down to like half of what your seam allowance currently is. And I'll say about half. If you're confident in your stitching, you can get a bit closer if you want to. But basically, the less seam allowance there is, the easier it's going to tuck inside the bag. Which I will do in a second. I'm just going to close this up because I'm confident that we're good. Tuck it in. Pull tight. Good to go. What a great way to spend a rainy day. Alright, so I'm going to tuck the zipper pocket in and I take my fingers and I really push out those corners so that it sits nice and flat and beautiful. Zip up the pocket. I always stand over my bag. I just find it easier. Making sure it all fits nicely. It does. It looks awesome. You can iron that in a bit better too. I'm all about the ironing. I'll do it later though. Alright, there's the bag. Now I just have to attach the handles. I'm thinking, I didn't grab them before, but I do think strap-ins. Strap-ins. I still have them in bags of two from when I sold them. Um, it's fine. I'll get to it when I'm ready and take them all out. So what I'm going to do is slide these on and have the side where the holes are on the right side. Because when we put them in and fold them up, then they're going to look nice. You can do it the other way if you prefer. This is the way I like. I also like to put these in here because I am constantly losing the tiny, tiny screws. Me and the screws are not friends. I drop them. I will most likely drop them through this. It's just how my life is. So I'm going to hold this on nice and firm and even. And then electric screwdriver. Oh no, that did not go as planned at all, did it? It's got a light in it too, which is just amazing. Don't know who thinks of these things, but thank you. I don't know why the screws aren't going in like they normally do. They're being a bit of a jerk. If I'm being totally honest. But anyway. So we're putting the holes on the nice side. You can get ones that just kind of crimp onto the ends, in which case that doesn't matter which side you use. You can also do your handles opposite to what I'm doing. I just like this way the best, so I'm doing what I like because I'm the one designing it. But you could do it so that the, the strap bit is hidden underneath. If you wanted to. See that one worked out alright. So that's one handle. Let's do the same to the other ones. There's no real trick to these. You just hold them on until they screw on. And see? Okay, so under here we've got like a bit of a messy end with thread. You can literally just shove it inside. At least I did. Now I've wrecked it because I took it off. But it was hidden a second ago. See? Gone. 
Another reason why I love these, your ends don't therefore have to look amazing. If you've got fabric, you don't have to tuck the raw edge under. There's so many benefits to doing strap ends, except that they cost more. They make the bag cost more, but it still looks amazing no matter what. So I'll be selling this one for $100 if anyone's interested in what I sell my bag prices for. Lolas are 100 because they're pretty quick. More complex bags are between 120 and 140 for me. Um, because it does, like, even though I got this particular vinyl cheap, right, stuff that you get from Inklings and the Kraken will be considerably more. And then some people want, like, weird custom stuff. Uh, if I have to order a fabric from somewhere like Spoonflower, where it's a one-off custom thing, the customer ends up, I actually tell the customer to get the fabric, and I'll just take, a like, 10 or 20 dollars off the price of the bag and they can send me the fabric um because i some people just want like super specific stuff and spoon flower like the, the prices of the fabrics are right but because it's an overseas thing you've got to pay all that postage so if my customers and it has happened several times if my customers really really want something i'm happy to use any fabric that they provide um, I tell them what kind of a base they should get, and they are, then I just get them to order it. And that way I'm not out of pocket if they change their mind. They're also less likely to change their mind because they've already um, decided on it. So I am going to do... These are the... Um, how amazing is this? It's glittery. It's still just my rivet template. It's just a glitter one. They will be on offer soon from Brimax. And they are amazing and I am obsessed. So of course I got green because do you guys really expect anything different from me anymore? Because I don't think you do. So what I'm doing is I'm putting this up against the end of the strap end. Which is why I don't put the holes until after I've put the strap ends on. If I wasn't using strap ends then this would be at the actual end. The strap ends just give a little extra. Um... So on top of it having glitter, they've actually put like a paint so that you can still read all the stuff, which again, I think is very clever. I imagine that takes a lot of time to do the, oh, stop it. Sorry. I will get onto that. I'm going to fix that today. I want to mount the um thing to the wall. I get some... um blue tack and blue tack it to the wall with like two strips of it or something so I'm now just punching all the holes if you don't have a rivet setting template you can do it without it don't get me wrong you just have to hold a ruler next to it and like measure out the lines I just find these more quick and accurate is probably the right words Ugh. Gently down so I don't mess with the thing. So now I just need, and I'm gonna again, I love this bowl. Everybody should have a little bowl or dish. Doesn't have to be Lord of the Rings. Not everyone's a bit of a nerd like me, but any kind of bowl. Even if you go to like an op shop and get one of those um, like crystal y ones, they're just really handy. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to have right side up and go down and then fold it around so that this is what we're going to get. Then I'm going to push the rivet post through both sides, put the back on, put it under here, fold the bags that's out of the way. Make sure that it's level and even and fabulous, and then squish it. See? So, so pretty. Then I'm going to run my fingers along it to make sure there's no twists, and I do this every time. My brain just doesn't go, oh, that's right, because every time I've tried that, it doesn't work out. So every time I will put the post through, and then I check the handle again, because even though I can take rivets out, it is a pain in the butt, and I don't want to. And then, again, I'm going to line this up, squish it down. Ta-da! Oh, my God, it looks amazing. 
I'm really, really happy with how this bag's turned out. This is probably too full on for a lot of people, and I totally get that. But please know that a lot of my customers like the cool, crazy out there stuff. I actually have some blood spatter lining fabric, and I really want to make another evil teddy bear bag. I'm thinking maybe doing it as a fixin' though. Because my evil teddy bear was amazing. I have a little cushion on my bed. <laughs> Alright. Squish that down. Move that out of the way. And voila. One complete fabulous bag. Look at that. So it's got bag feet. It's got cute accents. I mean it's very busy. But it's, it's definitely a conversation piece. It looks amazing. And see how I've done the Tory squish? See how this is not sitting super weird? That's what you want. So this side, sitting weird because I haven't squished it yet. This side sits nicely. I will do the other side. It's on my list. I just, you know, you just squish it. Also, if it's too thick here, what you do is you actually fold it over. I'm assuming I've convinced you all to buy these because they're amazing. Uh, and when you ask me what they are, they are leather tool pliers, all right? Because they've got the smooth in here so that they don't put like normal marks. And then I'm just gonna squish where those bits sit so that it sits better. See how it's less, less crappy now? Same with this side. So again, get this right on the seam and it is quite thick there. There's a lot of vinyl going on. Squish it with the pliers and it'll just help it get the crease in it so it'll sit better. See? Aha! Oh All right, guys. Well, that's pretty much all the wisdom I have about that. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Oh, see the end? you got to do that too. Otherwise, it won't sit as nice. But that's it. I'll see you next time. Bye!